nothing to do with tourism. It has to do with loan forgiveness. It has one-stop shopping for... It has lots of different bureaucracies that will be established within Rhode Island Commerce Commission. What Now, let, let me be clear. If, if Rhode Island has been successful in tourism, it's really despite the best efforts of the state. Fair statement? I, it, I, I That's... Boy, you really have a gift with words. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, 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 the, and the added irony, of course, is the fact that the money that they're looking to, shall we say, reap from the variety of uh, successful parts of the state in tourism is money that was really developed through the set, sweat equity, if you will, of a handful of tourism councils, not the least of which, of course, is South County. Exactly. All right, so then let's take it down to the next level. You're going to inculcate a really the poster child for governmental failure in the state, which is the Rhode Island Economic Development Commission slash Commerce Corp slash whatever the hell they're going to call it in two years from now, <laughs> and and so and, and who, have, who have had a 30-year unabridged, unedited record of absolute failure in every single thing that they've touched. So what we're going to do then is add more bureaucracy to these, these same living, breathing failures to – be, to be run by a gentleman who has just landed in the state and has no institutional knowledge whatsoever of anything that's happened in the state and has no background in tourism, has no background in commerce, was a failed educational secretary from a state that's on the brink of disaster, much like Rhode Island. Is that a fair statement? Pat Ford for governor! <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I don't know. It, my, you know. My head explodes when I hear this stuff because, you know, again, it is the golden goose. Whether it be Newport or whether it be South County and whether it be Providence, you've got individual efforts that are generational in place. And at the same time, we're going to incorporate those four disparate elements into one campaign for which we have no time or money for. Uh, you're gifted. <laughs> I, I can't. I, I, it, that isn't quite the word my wife uses. <laughs> it seems to me that, that what, you know, when we talk about tourism in the state, you know, you you obviously love South County. I mean, you, you live and breathe South County, Rhode Island. Well, my family's been here for 300 years, so it's easy for me to live, oh, eat, and breathe South County. Right. If you go by Shermantown Road, say hi, Grammy. And and if if and we have these these people throughout the state that are you know just as passionate about Newport or Providence Absolutely or the Blackstone they are. Valley. Um, you know, in a time where we should be thinking about probably specializing and make it like trying to identify what makes these places special and capitalize on that how can you then take uh you know a blanket style a blanket management style or a blanket mission right and, and, and i think the important point over the we, entire but, state let me jump I, in for a second the important point here is you're going to do that in lieu of all the efforts that made you successful that's in the right. first place i mean one on top of the other again if you were to layer on if you were to bring in marketing professionals who had a clear track record in doing this and say, okay, we're going to take these four elements that are successful, let them run by themselves, but take the success and their efforts and their messages and combine them into a statewide message. That's You advocate for that. Well, I, one size does not fit all. Right. And, and I think that people get confused quite frequently that somehow or other if we just have a state uh, agency, that that will trickle down. That's what has been uh, proposed by uh, some some sections of the government. And, and and as I said to you before, I thought Dan Hostetler said it best when he spoke before the House Finance Committee and, and clearly stated, if you think that people are coming to South County because they've gotten lost trying to get to Newport, you're wrong. There's an integrated marketing campaign that brings attention not only to Westerly and Mesquamacate and Watch Hill, but all the way into Narragansett and East Greenwich. And when you give... A, Visitors, the opportunity, that critical mass, that marketing 101 that we all need enough reason to go there because there's enough diversity for us to enjoy, there's a lot to be done in the largest geographical region of tourism in, in the state of Rhode Island. Now, let's, let's talk. You, you touched, started to touch on this at the beginning of the show. Uh, there and are, they still can go to, and they still can go to Newport and Providence right. and 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 Black uh, and Block <laughs> Island. They still a, can do all those. I things. I think it's important to note too that this is we're not talking about Rhode Islanders here, folks. These are people who don't mind driving That's right. twenty exactly. minutes to get someplace. Exactly, and, and you know, <laughs> you and know? Everyone so is, we're not worried about you know when when you can keep your provincialism when it comes to tourism because we're getting them in from out of state. Here. Well, it's, it's a not. wonderful thing to have great pride in where you live, and you and I think that we do in our 
our, our own particular neighborhoods, our own particular towns. And I think you find that all throughout South County and everywhere in the state of Rhode Island. That's not necessarily, that's a good thing. Yeah. How do we make that a positive thing and share it with those people that are wanting to come in and visit us and spend money and go home? I think we should be grateful because it actually, we have research that says that $1,000, $500 each year is saved by each and every taxpayer because tourism exists. And I would suggest to you, if in fact this this proposal that's before us is not implemented correctly, we may lose ground and lose money as a result of it because we won't. We are moving. We work six months and a year out. Right. Right. You can't just say, "Oh, well, we'll drop an ad this month and we'll bring people in." People don't make make those kinds of arrangements to do it. Now, and I want to talk, too, about the unique nature of South County's, I'll call it, um, family investment in tourism. You're talking about generational businesses that have existed literally in some cases for in excess of 100 years. Yeah, the, the Andrea Hotel is a beautiful example of that. They suffered terribly during this past storm that we had, Sandy, mm -hmm. and they opened up as a restaurant. I certainly have brought travel riders down there, and they've enjoyed fabulous lunches right on the beach, on the on the porch that sits on the sand, and it, it you can't beat it. And Grammy used to run uh, the the front desk, and they had been there since 1938. So we know that in the southern portion of the state we have lots of generational, not to mention the fact that our indigenous people, the Narragansetts, are in the southern end of the state. And they certainly have a story that needs to be told. And uh, we just spent $6 million to secure the head of the salt pond at one of the richest archaeological sites on the East Coast for indigenous people. Oh, so, so now, as, li as a libertarian on this show, in the construct here, if you're listening for the first time, by the way, you are listening to The Coalition on AM 630 at 99.7 FM. Dave Fisher and I are hosting Myrna George, uh, Chief Executive Officer of the South County Tourism Council. One of our recurring messages in this show is that who is development supposed to be for? And my argument and Dave's argument, we agree on this, is that it is for the people and the businesses that are already there. Hmm. As a state, we spend a lot of money and disproportionate effort on trying to make things attractive for people to come in and become entrepreneurs, when particularly in this case, we've got an existing base of strong, often family-owned, privately held businesses that have managed to be successful without tax incentives, without giveaways, without crony corporatism, without anything that is the hallmark of everything that comes out of economic development. So you, when you look at the bigger picture here, you've got a sophisticated marketing effort in place to support and essentially grow and give recognition to that which already exists. Mm -hmm. With your organization, talk, we started talking about the beginning of the show, but I want you to talk about some of the efforts because I think there's a tendency, particularly from this governor, and this is my editorialization, not yours, but from this governor to think that somehow she is going to land in, on planet, back on planet Rhode Island and impart some type of new age, high tech, sophisticated form of marketing, when in fact a lot of that already exists, doesn't it? In my opinion, it, it is in place. Do we need a strong state division? Yes, but that has been a decision that has been made repeatedly over the past decade to, to cut that funding. And if there's a real uh, will to make that happen, then I wish that the economic development people in this state had made it a decade ago. We've only got a couple minutes for the break, and we're going to carry you over. But tell us about some of the things that your council engages in, whether it be market research, the sophistication of your effort. Tell us about that. I operate with a 22-member board, two people from each of the 11 towns that are part of the tourism industry in the southern end of the state. We present to them a uh, integrated marketing campaign that includes media buys. Uh, it includes uh, lure pieces. It includes research, ongoing research that continues to evaluate exactly how successful uh, those uh, initiatives are, as well as to survey who our visitor is. And uh, certainly, uh, I have over the years learned a great deal that the visitor, as I said to you earlier, that's coming into South County may not be the same young, upwardly mobile. Uh, water fire person that's wanting to go into a, a more urban environment. It may not be the same people that everybody thinks one size will fit all. We have lots to offer people and great diversity, but I, I think we need to realize there needs to be a specialization of boots on the ground in each of those regions.
By the way, you have a beautiful website. If folks haven't been to it, again, this is the first day of summer for us in Rhode Island. It's www.southcountyri.com. It's, it's, not only is it visually gorgeous, but at the same time, it incorporates a lot of planning, a, a, a lot of planning uh, capabilities, a lot of features about individual businesses. It's just, it, again, the, I, I think the governor would have us believe that there's these sleepy little businesses that need to be taken on by Mother Rhode Island when, in fact, you guys are doing a hell of a job. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to take a quick, quick break right now. But when we come back, I want to talk about really specifics in terms of dollars and cents. And before you leave, I want you to give us a couple of success stories, if you will, that are taking place right in South County. Folks, you're listening to The Coalition on AM630 WPRO 99.7, Facebook.com slash The Coalition Radio, Coalition Radio underscore U.S. at The Mighty Mighty Twitter, and coalitionradio.us our website we blog we talk we stream it's all there for you joining us this afternoon is Myrna George Chief Ramod Head Toncho Chief Water Buffalo of the South County Tourism Council we'll be right back please stay tuned (laughs) the voice of Southern New England News Talk 630 and 99.7 FM WPRO Sundays with Deb Ruggiero and Amazing Women. The defense sector in Rhode Island contributes $3.7 billion to our state's economy. Nearly 33,000 direct and indirect jobs. Molly Donahue-McGee joins me from Cynidia, the Southeastern New England Defense Industry Alliance. Hope you'll join us. Amazing Women with Deb Ruggiero. Sundays at 7 a.m. on The Voice of Southern New England. WPRO. <laughs> From the Seascape Lawn Care Weather Center, here's your exclusive AccuWeather forecast. Cool night again, mostly clear, down to 44. Many outlying spots, 48 in the city. Breezy warmer tomorrow, mostly sunny at I-79. Partly cloudy tomorrow night, down to 55. Partly sunny and nice for Memorial Day, get up to 79. I'm meteorologist John Fear. AccuWeather on the voice of Southern New England. News Talk 630 and 99.7 FM WPRO. Beacon Shipping Logistics will ship any car, any vehicle, anywhere in the United States with door-to-door service. Just call 855-3-SHIP-IT. They ship vehicles for thousands of auto dealers throughout the country, so you know you can trust them to provide the most reliable auto transport in the industry. And they offer open or enclosed shipping for your precious cargo. Did you see a car online and can't get there? Let Beacon Shipping ship and deliver it right to your door. Need to get your boat from West Palm to Warwick Neck? Beacon can do it. Call Beacon Shipping Logistics for transporting one car to an entire fleet. Call 855-3-SHIP-IT or BeaconShippingLogistics.com for service that shines. Let Beacon Shipping Logistics take the stress out of your life. Beacon Shipping Logistics provides the most honest auto transport service in the industry. Beacon Shipping Logistics, your one source for transporting one car or a whole fleet. Call 855-374-4748 for a free quote or BeaconShippingLogistics.com. This is John Mines, owner of the Courtesy Auto Group, and I'm here with General Manager Steve Silva. This Memorial Day weekend, get to Courtesy Hyundai's used car elimination event. There's Hyundai's, Kia's, Mitsubishi's, Ford's, Honda's, Chevy's, and virtually every make and model. Buy with no money down. There's 15 models priced under $149 a month. Many have the balance of the factory warranty and come back with no charge lifetime engine warranties. $16,000 vehicles marked down to $10,000. Some will be marked down as much as $10,000. In Prices start at $69.95. Have a trade? You're going to get paid. I'll pay $3,500 for any trade. Plus the 0% financing available. Our goal is to offer 100% financing to everyone. 100% financing. Just look for the tents this Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Rain or shine, you will never save more. Courtesy Hyundai is located at 939 Newport Avenue in Patuka, Rhode Island, exit 2A off 95. With tax, reg, license, doc, and a 595 acquisition fee. Zero down with 60 monthly payments of 1666 for each 1,000 borrowed. Is your I'm a freelance photographer, and I handle my own business. That's why I use QuickBooks Self-Employed. It's a simple program that helps me estimate my federal quarterly taxes and separate my business and personal expenses. Say I buy a new lens. If the purchase pops up on my phone, I just swipe left to file it as a business expense. And tickets to a ball game with my kids, I swipe right to file as personal. Dad, I'm hungry. And swipe right for the hot dogs. That's how I own it. If you work for yourself, try QuickBooks Self-Employed with a free 30-day trial. Learn more at qbselfemployed.com. It all started with an ice axe, an Austrian Academ Pakel, to be precise. Just the thing Mary and Lloyd Anderson needed to summit Mount Rainier back in 1938, and what brought their group of friends together to form a co-op called REI. 
77 years later, we're still a co-op. And we still search for the best deals on the best outdoor gear around. 